Hi, I'm Semen Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Flyback Primary Site Control, Detailed Explanation of Sampling Amplifier. This is a follow-up on an earlier posted uh, video entitled Flyback Primary Site Control. This is the link to it, and I'm also going to print the link on the page of the YouTube video that you are now watching. And in this video, I've explained the operation of a primary site control of a flyback converter. Now, I got, received a number of questions regarding the operation of the amplifier that is used in the realization of such a control. So this is a follow-up video that explains perhaps better the operation of the amplifier. So in this presentation, I'm going to sort of follow up on the flyback primary site control video and to further explain the linear technology sampling amplifier, which is patented. So here is the issue. We have a flyback, and the objective of the primary side control is to control the operation, that is, to stabilize the output without sensing the output, but only from the primary side. So this is the objective of the primary side control. Now I'm showing here now the charging mode. At this stage, the transistor is on, current is flowing this way, and the voltage across the primary is V in. However, during the discharge instant, when current is flowing outside, the voltage at the output is reflected back to the input, to the primary winding, and the ratio of n to 1, this is the turn ratio of this uh, coupled inductor. So we see here a reflection of the output. There is an issue of the diode, and in the original video I'm discussing, so the effect of the voltage drop of the diode on the measurement will be small. So the problem is that we have now to measure this voltage n times v out, which is sort of floating, it's not referred to ground, bring it to the ground level so that the controller can sense it and then act on it. So this is the arrangement of the linear technology approach. We have here two transistors, two MOSFET. These are P-channel MOSFET. And this is the drain. Here is the source. We have two units, which are connected at the gate. The transistor are scaled to 1 to m, which means that this transistor is m times larger or smaller than uh, this one. And then this transistor now has two resistors, R1 and R2, which are connected here to this point. So the equivalent circuit looks something like that. I am now representing the winding of the primary as a voltage source. This is like a voltage source. We have R1, we have then R2. These are the two transistors. And then each one has its own VGS, VGS1 and VGS2. And the meaning of the scaling is that if VGS1 is equal to VGS2, then the current here, IB2, will be M times the current of IB1, okay? Now, the IB1, this current here, is controlled by a current source. So this current source actually imposes VGS because due to this current source, the voltage of the gate is changing until VH1 reaches the point that it is imposing IB1. So that IB1 is sort of causing this VGS to adjust to whatever is required such that IB1 will be flowing here. So let's see what are the steps required to design this sampling amplifier. So first thing, I'm going to select R1 such that R1 is M N times V out divided by M IB1. This is IB2, okay? So the voltage drop here is equal to N times V out. This would mean that the voltage across the whole branch here is zero, okay? Which means that the voltage here is now V in, okay? Because this branch here, the total voltage is sums up to zero. And therefore, 
if the gates have the same potential, the same voltage, then this would mean that indeed VGS2 will be equal to VGS1 at this point. So this imposes an equal VGS. Now I'm going to choose R2 such that it will be equal to the V reference over IB2, which is M times IB1, okay, this voltage here, which means now that I'm making this error voltage at the input of the amplifier, of the error amplifier, to be zero, okay, because the voltage here is equal to V reference. So this is now the balanced situation. In this balanced situation, NV out is equal to IB2 times R1. IB2 times R2 is equal to V reference, and everything is stable. Okay, so let's see now what happens if there is a change. So let's do some perturbation here. Suppose the output voltage is changing. So there is a change here in the reflected voltage. This will cause an increase in the voltage here, and this will increase the VGS. Good. Remember, this is a P channel. If VGS is becoming larger, then IB2 is becoming larger. Okay. Now, IB2, of course, is equal to the current here. So this current is becoming larger. So therefore, there is a voltage increase here at this terminal, at this negative input of the amplifier, which causes a negative output at the air amplifier, which will activate, of course, the modulator such that the duty cycle, in fact, uh, will become smaller, or the effective duty cycle. And this will, in turn, assuming, of course, a stabilized system, this will eventually bring delta V to zero until this system is stabilized again. So this is the basic operation of this uh, sampling amplifier. So this brings me to the end of this very short uh, presentation. I hope you find it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.